Hello everyone. Welcome to Anime Dreams. I'm thrilled to have you here on my channel. Today, we're diving into an exciting fanfic discussion. What if Yu-Gi-Oh became Naruto's first love? Disclaimer, the content on this channel is purely for entertainment and discussion. I don't own any of the anime footage featured in my videos, all rights and credits go to the respective creators and copyright holders. Alright, let's get started. A young boy, no older than six, walked through the streets of Konoha, his blonde hair shining in the evening light as he returned from playing at the local playground. Despite his cheerful demeanor, he felt the weight of the glares from the villagers around him. Their silent judgment followed him as he made his way to his modest apartment, a small space that had been given to him by the one person he cherished most, his Gigi. This boy was Naruto Uzumaki, a lively child who always found a reason to smile. Yet, as time passed, his once bright smiles began to fade. Inside his room, Naruto set down his belongings, removed his worn clothes, and sat on the edge of his bed. For a moment, he gazed at the floor before tears quietly began to fall. Wiping his eyes with his small hands, he whispered into the empty air, Why can't I make more friends? Why do they hate me? Why do they always look at me like that? The silence offered no answers. Exhausted from the day, Naruto lay down, curling into a small ball, wondering what it might feel like to have a family. His thoughts lingered on his parents, where they might be, and if they had ever loved him. Eventually, sleep claimed him. The next morning, Naruto stirred as sunlight filtered through the trees. Groggily opening his eyes, he realized with a start that he was no longer in his familiar apartment. Instead, he was surrounded by an endless expanse of trees. Confused and disoriented, he stood up and tried to make sense of his surroundings. Where am I? What happened? This isn't my home, he murmured. As he wandered through the forest, his stomach growled, reminding him of his hunger. Desperation grew as he scanned the unfamiliar terrain, searching for food or a way back to the village. Eventually, he spotted a hill in the distance and climbed it, hoping to see something familiar. The view was breathtaking, but his hope diminished when he saw no sign of Konoha. Descending the hill, Naruto noticed a small plume of smoke rising from within the forest. A faint smile crossed his face. Maybe someone is there, he thought, heading toward the source. After a few minutes of walking, the smell of roasted fish filled the air, making his stomach rumble louder. Peeking through the bushes, he saw a fire with fish cooking over it and a young woman sitting nearby. She appeared to be in her late teens, with dark blonde hair tied neatly. Her attire included a black and purple blouse with cloud patterns, matching pants, and purple fingerless gloves. A headband with a cloud insignia rested on her forehead. She seemed focused on the meal, unaware of the boy watching her. Naruto hesitated, torn between stepping out to speak with her and staying hidden. His stomach, however, betrayed him, growling loudly and breaking the silence. Startled, the woman grabbed a kunai and turned toward the bushes where Naruto was hiding. Come out, now. The young woman called out as Naruto hesitated, considering his next move. She was clearly a skilled individual, and running wouldn't improve the situation, he was sure of that. After a brief moment of deliberation, Naruto decided to trust in his luck and cautiously stepped out from his hiding spot, his expression revealing a mix of nervousness and sincerity. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to intrude. I noticed your fire and thought I might find someone to help me, Naruto explained, his voice soft and apologetic. The woman's stern expression softened when she noticed his youthful appearance. She lowered the small weapon she had been holding and approached him with a calmer demeanor. What are you doing all the way out here? She asked, her tone curious but gentle. Naruto looked down at the ground, his shoulders slumping slightly as he answered, I don't know. Last night, I was asleep in my apartment, but when I woke up, I was here. I don't know how to get back home. The woman studied him closely, her expression neutral as she considered his story. He was clearly just a kid, and his words seemed genuine. A small smile formed on her face as she crouched down to his level. What's your name? She asked kindly. Naruto glanced up at her and offered a small, 
tentative smile. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. What's your name? He asked in return, his tone brightening a little. The woman chuckled softly, returning his smile. My name is Yugitoni. It's nice to meet you, Naruto Uzumaki. Do you know where you are right now? She asked. Naruto shook his head, clearly uncertain. Seeing his confusion, Yugito retrieved a map from her belongings and pointed to a specific spot on it. You're here, she said, indicating a point on the map. This is the edge of Yuno Kuni, the land of hot springs, and Hai no Kuni, or the land of fire, where Konoha is located. Naruto leaned closer to examine the map, his finger instinctively pointing to Konoha as his eyes lit up with recognition. That's where I live, Konoha, Yugito san, Naruto said warmly. Yugito chuckled at his friendly tone as she rolled up the scroll and placed it back in her pouch. Turning to face him, she smiled gently. Well, I'd offer to escort you back, but Kumo and Konoha aren't exactly on the best terms right now. My presence there might stir up trouble between our villages, she explained. Naruto nodded, offering a small, understanding smile tinged with sadness. An awkward silence settled between them until Naruto's stomach grumbled loudly, breaking the stillness. Embarrassed, he blushed, while Yugito burst into soft laughter. It's not funny, Yugito-san. I'm really hungry, Naruto said, his cheeks reddening further. Yugito tried to suppress her laughter, but it only grew louder. Sorry, Naruto-san, but I couldn't help it, she replied, finally regaining her composure. I suppose I can share some of my food with you. Yugito settled down and motioned for Naruto to join her. Sitting beside her, he gratefully accepted the roasted fish she handed him. As he bit into it, savoring the taste, a smile of satisfaction spread across his face. They ate in companionable silence for a while before Yugito broke it with a question. Are you going to be alright, Naruto-san? She asked, her tone serious. Naruto paused mid-bite, his expression thoughtful as he gazed at the ground. I'm not sure. I'm grateful you told me where I was, but... I don't want to go back to Konoha, he admitted softly. Yugito frowned slightly, her curiosity piqued. Why not? Surely your family must be worried about you, she said gently. Naruto's sad smile returned as he replied, I don't have any family. I'm an orphan. Yugito's eyes widened in surprise, and she almost dropped her fish. Placing a comforting hand on his shoulder, she looked at him with sympathy. I'm sorry, Naruto-san. I didn't know. It's okay, he said with a shrug. But it's not just that. People in Konoha. They don't like me. I don't know why, but they glare at me, and I've never had many friends. It doesn't feel like home. Yugito studied his face carefully, searching for any sign of exaggeration, but his words seemed genuine. She glanced down at her meal, her mind racing with thoughts. He's just like me, she realized. After a moment, she nudged his shoulder gently, drawing his attention back to her. A warm smile lit up her face. Well, I can't take you back to Konoha, and you're certainly not going to make it there on your own. Would you like to come to my village instead? I've completed my mission, so I have some time, she offered. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, and tears welled up as he smiled. Without warning, he leaned forward, wrapping his arms around her in a heartfelt embrace. Thank you, Yugito-san, he said, his voice trembling with gratitude. Are you sure, though? I don't want to cause any trouble for you. Yugito chuckled softly, touched by his concern. She gently ruffled his hair. It'll be fine, Naruto-kun. Don't worry about it. Naruto nodded, his smile growing as he held on to her for a moment longer. When he finally released her, she handed him another fish skewer, which he accepted with enthusiasm. After finishing their meal, Yugito fetched water from a nearby pond to extinguish the fire, while Naruto helped her pack up her belongings. Once everything was ready, she motioned for him to follow. Naruto smiled brightly and took her hand as they began their journey toward Yugito's village, a sense of hope and companionship growing between them. 
back in Konoha. The Hokage carries many titles, the protector of the village, the strongest shinobi, and a leader with unparalleled patience and wisdom. Sarutobi Hiruzen, the current Hokage, was known for his composure, yet tonight, that trait seemed to elude him. He paced back and forth in his office, his mind weighed down by concern. After what felt like an eternity, the door opened, and an Anbu operative stepped inside. Sarutobi immediately turned to face him. Did you locate Naruto-kun? He asked, his tone urgent and strained. The Anbu shook his head silently, signaling failure. Sarutobi's shoulders slumped as he sank into his chair. Of all nights, this was the one he had promised to visit Naruto, only to be called away to an emergency meeting. Bitterness crept into his heart as he vowed to uncover who had orchestrated this distraction. With a wave of his hand, he dismissed the Anbu. Alone once more, Sarutobi's gaze drifted to the carved visage of the Yondaime Hokage on the mountain, his expression heavy with guilt. Minato, he whispered, his voice barely audible, I failed you. The village you gave your life to protect has betrayed your son. I cannot express how deeply ashamed I am, of myself and this place. His words lingered in the silent room as he awaited news of Naruto's whereabouts. From the window, he could see the streets alive with celebration. The jubilant cries of the villagers reached his ears, phrases like the demon is gone. And we can finally sleep in peace without that monster looming over us. Cutting through the night air. Sarutobi's heart grew heavier, the weight of the villagers' hatred stabbing at his conscience. He clenched his fists, his resolve hardening as he muttered, I'm sorry, Naruto-kun. I failed to protect you. In an instant, his killing intent, Ki, flared as he exited the building, determined to put an end to the grotesque celebration that mocked the very ideals he was sworn to uphold. As Naruto and Yugito continued their journey beyond the borders of Yuno Kuni, Yugito unfolded a map to check their route. The crisp air around them grew colder, and Naruto glanced at her with curiosity. Yugito-chan, why is it so cold all of a sudden? Naruto asked, pulling his cloak tighter. Yugito chuckled softly and handed him a set of warm clothes. We've left you no kuni, Naruto-san. We're now entering Shimo no kuni, also known as the Land of Frost, she explained. Naruto nodded, his smile widening as he felt a sense of camaraderie with Yugito. She seemed genuinely kind, a rare quality he had not encountered often. Grasping her hand a little tighter, he looked over with an expression of gratitude. Noticing his demeanor, Yugito tilted her head slightly, a puzzled smile on her face. What's making you so happy, Naruto-san? Naruto's grin only grew as he replied, You're the first person who's truly been a friend to me, Yugito-chan. Back in Konoha, I had friends, but many of them were always a bit wary of me. I could feel their fear, but I chose to ignore it because I wanted companionship. You're different, your kindness feels real. Aside from my Gigi and a few others, no one's been this genuine. Yugito's cheeks flushed faintly at his earnest words. Scratching her cheek lightly, she gave a modest response. It's nothing, really, Naruto-san. You deserve kindness like anyone else. Naruto smiled at her words, but Yugito's curiosity was piqued. Her gaze shifted thoughtfully as she considered something. Finally, she asked, Naruto-san, do you know about the Kyubi? Naruto nodded. People say it attacked Konoha and that the Yondaime Hokage defeated it to save the village. Why do you ask, Yugito-chan? Yugito hesitated for a moment before shaking her head. No particular reason, Naruto-kun. I was just curious, she replied casually, surprising him with the change in how she addressed him. Naruto gave a slight nod and turned his attention to the snow-covered surroundings. The two soon came across a small, vacant cabin nestled amidst the frost-coated trees. This looks like a good place to rest for the night, Yugito suggested. Agreed, Naruto said, smiling as they stepped inside. Yugito unpacked a sleeping bag and spread it on the floor. Gesturing to Naruto, she said, Come on, Naruto-kun. It's cold, and you'll need warmth to avoid freezing out here. Naruto hesitated for a moment, 
a faint blush rising to his cheeks, but he complied. Once settled, Yugito joined him, wrapping her arms around him to share warmth. It's the best way to conserve body heat, she murmured drowsily before drifting off to sleep. Naruto, though flustered by the closeness, eventually relaxed as he caught a pleasant scent that seemed to linger around Yugito. His thoughts wandered briefly before sleep overtook him. As the night deepened, both dreamed peacefully, their minds focused on what the next day might bring in their journey through the land of frost. The next morning. Yugito stirred awake, letting out a soft yawn as her eyes adjusted to the dim light. She glanced out the window to see that snow continued to fall, though not as heavily as the previous night. The overcast sky obscured the time of day, leaving her unsure of the hour. Turning her attention to Naruto, a gentle smile spread across her face as she reached out a hand toward him. However, she paused abruptly when she heard him mumbling in his sleep. Don't look at me like that. Why do you hate me? You're talking about the QB. What does that have to do with me? Naruto muttered, his voice filled with anguish. Yugito's smile faded, her expression darkening as she listened. Concern etched across her features, she leaned closer and gently shook Naruto awake. His eyes flew open, meeting hers as confusion briefly flickered across his face before recognition set in. Oh, Yugito-chan. Good morning, he said softly, his voice still tinged with sleep. Yugito returned his greeting with a warm, innocent smile, but her hand moved instinctively to wipe away the lingering tears tracing down his cheeks. Are you all right, Naruto-kun? Yugito asked with concern as she noticed his tears. Naruto gave a small smile and nodded slowly as he stood up. I'm fine, Yugito-chan. It was just a bad dream, Naruto replied. Satisfied with his answer, Yugito rolled up the sleeping bag, and Naruto helped her as they left the empty shack behind. As they walked, Naruto decided to learn more about his new companion and turned to her. So, Yugito-chan, what's Kumo like? Naruto inquired. Yugito chuckled softly as she considered his question. Well, Naruto-kun, if I had to sum it up in one word, I'd say. Decent. The shinobi are disciplined, but the people are friendly enough, she explained. Naruto nodded with a smile, his attention drawn to her headband. So, you're a shinobi? Naruto asked. Yugito nodded, pointing to her headband. Yes, that's right. It's hard work, but you learn a lot along the way, she replied. Naruto grinned mischievously as he kept glancing at her headband. Do you think I could become one too? He asked, his eyes gleaming with determination. Yugito looked at him with a small, teasing smile. Why do you think you could become a shinobi? She asked, raising an eyebrow. Naruto pouted and kicked the snow. I know I can. I'll become the strongest shinobi in all the nations, he declared confidently. Yugito paused for a moment, laughing loudly, much to Naruto's confusion. He raised an eyebrow as she crouched down in the snow, laughing. You, a shinobi? That's quite the ambitious goal, Naruto-kun, Yugito said, still chuckling. Naruto scowled but then picked up a handful of snow, packing it into a ball. With a smirk, he threw it at her, covering her face in snow. Now that's funny, Yugito-chan, Naruto said, laughing. Yugito narrowed her eyes playfully picking up a snowball of her own. So, Naruto-kun likes a good challenge, huh? She said, throwing a snowball at him. Naruto dodged, then quickly formed his own and threw it back. The two shared a playful snowball fight, laughing together for several minutes. Afterward, as they caught their breath, Yugito grabbed Naruto's hand. Then strive to be the strongest, Naruto-kun. I'll become the strongest Kunoichi, she said with a determined smile. Naruto nodded, his smile widening. The strongest Kunoichi should stand alongside the strongest shinobi, Naruto said, his voice full of resolve. Yugito blushed slightly, wondering what he meant by that. Naruto noticed her blush and tilted his head in confusion, unaware of why his words had caused such a reaction. 
he shrugged it off and continued walking with her. Two days later, Kumagakur. Naruto and Yugito arrived at the village, and Naruto gasped in awe at the towering gates guarding the village. They passed through, with Yugito showing her identification to the guards. Naruto was amazed by the village's size and the variety of buildings within. Yugito smiled at his excitement as she held his hand, guiding him through the village. Let's go meet Rekage Sama. I'm sure he'll want to meet you, Yugito said. Naruto nodded eagerly, and they made their way toward the Rekage mansion. Along the way, Naruto wondered where Yugito lived. After a short walk, they arrived at the mansion and entered, heading to the top floor. Yugito knocked on the door, and a voice called from inside. Come in, the voice said. Yu-Gi-Oh entered with a slight bow, and Naruto followed closely. Inside, they were greeted by a large man and another person, whom Naruto assumed to be the Reikage's brother. Mission accomplished, Reikage-sama, Yu-Gi-Oh reported. The Reikage smiled slightly as his gaze fell on Naruto. Yu-Gi-Oh stepped aside, revealing Naruto to the Reikage. Naruto bowed respectfully. Hello, sir. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, he introduced himself. The Reikage gave a nod and looked to Yugito for further explanation. She gave a detailed account of her encounter with Naruto and his origins in Konoha. The Reikage listened intently, his eyes narrowing slightly as he processed the information, deducing that Naruto must be the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. Naruto, so you're from Konoha? Reikage asked, his voice steady. Naruto nodded, his expression neutral. Reikage muttered to himself briefly before breaking into a small chuckle. I see, that's why you don't want to go back? He mused. Naruto nodded again, a faint frown on his face. Reikage turned to Yugito with a smile. Well, Yugito ni, you found him, and now you're going to watch over him. He says he'll become the strongest shinobi, right? He asked. Yugito nodded, smiling. Reikage turned to Naruto. Kiribai will train you to become a great shinobi, he said. Yugito nodded, bowing in acknowledgement, while Naruto looked toward the man standing next to the Reikage. The man walked over to Naruto with a grin. Hey, kid. I see you're hanging with Yugi-chan. You're all right. Kiribai's gonna train you well. Get ready for some tough training, he said with a wide grin, his voice filled with enthusiasm. Yugito, Naruto, and Reikage exchanged a look of amusement as Kiribai began to rap. You'll get used to him, Naruto-kun, Yugito said with a smile. Naruto nodded, still a bit uncertain, but ready to face whatever came next. He bumped fists with Kiribai, who gave him an encouraging smile. I look forward to training you. Let's make you stronger, oh yeah. Kiribai said enthusiastically. Naruto chuckled, nodding in agreement. As they left the Reikage's office, the Reikage watched them go, resuming his paperwork. It seems the boy will grow stronger. It's a shame what happened in Konoha, but that's in the past. This village is about to get a lot more interesting, he said, a small smile on his face. Yugito, Naruto, and Kiribai left the office and made their way back to the village district. As they walked, Yugito continued to hold Naruto's hand, with Kiribai accompanying them. Yugito turned to Naruto and smiled warmly. Would you like me to show you around the village, Naruto-kun? She asked. Naruto, grinning, nodded and quickly ran ahead. Kiribai smirked as Yugito turned to him. What's so amusing? She inquired. Kiribai chuckled and began to tap out a beat. I see Miss Two Tails getting closer to Little Nine. I can feel the connection between you two. Seems like Two Tails might have a soft spot for Little Nine, Kiribai teased. Yugito blushed, stammering in surprise, much to Kiribai's amusement. They both turned back to see Naruto waving at them, and they walked up to join him as they continued the tour of the village. As they entered the village, Naruto's face lit up with excitement, his smile never fading as he took in the sights. Yugito quickened her pace to catch up with him, with Kiribai following closely behind. Once Yugito reached Naruto, she paused him for a moment, 
and he turned to face her. She offered him a gentle smile as Kiribai caught up with the two of them. So, Naruto-kun, would you like to head home first, or should we pick up your gear for training? Yugito asked. Naruto grinned mischievously, shrugging casually. I'm fine with whatever, Yugito-chan. I'm not tired if that's what you're wondering. Can we grab my stuff first? Naruto asked. Yugito chuckled and nodded, leading the way toward a weapons shop, with Naruto and Kiribai following behind. Kiribai looked to the right and grinned, pointing to the shop. Yo, Gaki, that's the perfect spot for you. Trust Bisama's instincts, he rapped playfully. Naruto's interest peaked, and he dashed into the store, followed by Yugito and Kiribai. As Naruto entered the shop, the bell above the door chimed to announce their arrival. He looked around in awe at the array of weapons, pondering what he might need for his training. Yugito and Kiribai stayed near the entrance, content to observe Naruto's choices. Given his experience avoiding the villagers' outbursts, Naruto was well versed in the types of weapons that were practical for his use. After a moment of searching, he selected six standard kunai and a few sets of shuriken and brought them to the counter. Yugito smiled at the cashier and pulled out her wallet. How much for everything? She asked. The cashier totaled up the items. The total comes to 770.30 yen, the man replied. Yugito nodded and handed over the correct amount, completing the transaction. Naruto glanced around the store once more, but Kiribai approached him with a grin. Hey kid, if you're going to be my student, we've got to get you some cool swords for training, Kiribai said enthusiastically. Naruto chuckled and nodded, and Kiribai began searching for a suitable sword. His eyes settled on a katana, and with a grin, he picked it up, excited to make a choice for his new student. Hey, check out this blade, B said to Naruto, presenting the weapon. Naruto's eyes widened as he examined the sword, which gleamed with a pure white hue. It was long and heavy, but Naruto felt confident he could grip it securely. B nodded in approval before moving to the next sword. He took it in his hands and studied it, then glanced at the one Naruto was holding. After a moment, he gave Naruto a thumbs up. Naruto beamed eagerly taking the sword from B to inspect it further. Despite his youthful enthusiasm, Naruto couldn't contain his excitement, bouncing around the shop in sheer joy. Yugito signaled for Naruto to place the swords on the counter as the shopkeeper prepared to ring them up. But before she could make the payment, B stepped forward. Hold up, Yugi-chan. I've got this, B said with a grin. The boy and I are going to have a blast with these swords. Yugito raised an eyebrow but stepped back, allowing B to approach the counter. He reached into his pocket and pulled out some money. What's the total for these beauties? B asked, his voice casual, while the shopkeeper wiped a bead of sweat from his forehead. The total cost is 26,960.50 yen, the man informed B. B recoiled in surprise, placing his hand over his chest. Their prices are unforgiving they're going to drain me dry. I can't handle much more of this, B muttered, as Yugito sighed in exasperation. Naruto chuckled at B's dramatic reaction as he handed over the payment for the swords. Afterward, Naruto, Yugito, and B gathered their belongings and made their way to Yugito's house, which was not far off. Yugito's house. Upon arriving at Yugito's home, Naruto observed the modest, yet cozy structure. It wasn't particularly large but exuded a warm charm. The house featured several sliding doors, and Yugito opened the main door for Naruto and B. Once inside, both Naruto and B removed their shoes. Yugito led them into the living room, where they placed Naruto's belongings on the couch. The group sat in silence for a moment, with B and Yugito occasionally glancing at Naruto. Feeling their gaze, Naruto turned to face them his expression neutral as he wondered why they were staring. Is something the matter? Naruto asked, puzzled. Yugito and B exchanged a glance, then nodded. Yugito moved a bit closer to Naruto and gently placed her hand on his shoulder. Naruto-kun, do you remember when you told me about your treatment in Konoha? She began. Naruto nodded, 
intrigued but unsure where the conversation was headed. B, his eyes narrowing behind his glasses, wore a frown that deepened as Yugito continued. Naruto-kun, we believe you might be the host of a baijuu, she revealed. Naruto's brow furrowed as he processed the unfamiliar word. What's a baijuu? Naruto asked, clearly confused. Yugito glanced at B, who stood up to explain, having the most experience in such matters. A baiju, or tailed beast, is a powerful being formed from immense chakra. They're typically feared for their strength and are sealed within a human host, or jinchuriki, B explained. Naruto absorbed the information, a sudden clarity beginning to form in his mind. The glares, the constant pursuit, the neglect, all of it began to make sense. His eyes lowered as realization set in. So, I'm a Jinchuriki? Naruto asked softly. Both Yugito and B nodded, confirming his suspicions. Emotion welled up inside him, and Yugito, sensing his distress, pulled him into a comforting embrace. But you're not a monster, Naruto-kun. Don't let anyone convince you otherwise, Yugito reassured him. Naruto remained silent for a while, contemplating her words. Both B and Yugito wondered if revealing this information too soon had been the right choice. Finally, Naruto looked up, offering them a small but reassuring smile, signaling that he was ready to continue the conversation. So, how many Baiju are there? And which one do I have? He asked, his curiosity piqued. Yugito and B exchanged another glance, then turned back to him. There are nine Baiju in total. B began. I'm guessing you have the QB. Naruto raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Does that mean I have the most powerful one, since it has the most tails? He asked with a hint of excitement. Both Yugito and B chuckled, relieved by his reaction. Yes, Naruto-kun, you have the strongest by Juu. I'm actually surprised it hasn't overwhelmed you, Yugito added. Naruto shuddered at the thought of losing control but quickly dismissed it. He refocused on his questions. So, how do you two know so much about the Baiju? Naruto asked. B grinned, pointing to himself. Well, Gaki, you're looking at the famous Jinchuriki of the Hachibi, B declared proudly. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise. He then turned to Yugito, who smiled as she pointed to herself. And I'm the Jinchuriki of the Nibi, she said. Naruto's jaw dropped, his awe apparent. Both of you are Jinchuriki? He asked in disbelief. They both nodded, smiling at his reaction. Naruto stood up, filled with even more questions. Can you talk to your Baiju? He asked eagerly. Yugito and B exchanged a glance before bursting into laughter. Naruto blushed slightly unsure of what he had said wrong. After a few moments, they calmed down, and Yugito addressed his question. Yes, Naruto-kun. Talking to our Baiju is one of the abilities of a Jinchuriki, along with tapping into their chakra. But it takes practice to do it effectively, Yugito explained. Naruto nodded, processing the information. He looked up at them, excitement shining in his eyes. Can I talk to mine? Naruto asked eagerly, his face lit up with hope. Yugito rolled her eyes while B gave him a thumbs up. Sure, kid. Just sit there and focus. You'll know where you are soon enough, B said. Naruto eagerly sat down in a meditative position, closing his eyes in concentration. Moments later, his eyes snapped open, and he found himself in a vast, sewer-like space within his mind. He wandered around for a while before coming across a pair of massive gates. He approached and noticed a small piece of paper with the word seal written on it. Naruto hesitated, then, feeling a bit reckless, stepped past the gates. As he ventured further, he had the distinct feeling that he was being watched. Stopping in his tracks, he glanced at the water surrounding him. His heart skipped a beat when he noticed a tall figure looming behind him. Slowly, he turned his head to see the figure smile as she placed a hand on his shoulder. Startled, Naruto turned quickly, losing his footing and stumbling into the water. He looked up to see a red-haired woman, her expression unreadable as she laughed softly at his clumsy fall. 
Her laughter grew louder, causing Naruto to frown in embarrassment. But she only smiled wider at his reaction. Naruto smirked playfully, rising to his feet and splashing some water toward her. The woman stopped laughing and looked down at her drenched clothes. Her smile turned into a glare, but she paused as she saw Naruto's grin. She let out a soft chuckle as she wrung out her wet hair. Naruto, now sitting down, looked up at her sheepishly. I'm sorry about that. I couldn't resist, Naruto said, slightly embarrassed. The woman turned toward him and chuckled again. It's all right, I suppose. I appreciate a good joke, she replied with a smile. Naruto grinned in return, now more at ease. Naruto narrowed his eyes inquisitively at the woman before him, his voice tinged with curiosity. So, who are you? He asked. The woman hesitated briefly, scratching her cheek with a faint smile. I'm QB. I'm your Baiju, Naruto-kun, she said with surprising candor. Naruto's eyes widened in shock as he took in the stunning woman standing before him. For a moment, he was at a loss for words, unable to reconcile the gentle demeanor of this person with the fierce reputation he had come to associate with the name. Sensing his unspoken thoughts, QB chuckled softly and rose to her feet. I know what you're thinking, she began, a mischievous glint in her eye. This is my human form. I don't often use the giant fox form everyone fears, although I probably should. Naruto blinked, finally pulling himself from his stupor, and stood up as well. It's hard to believe people call you a demon. You seem so kind, he said earnestly. A slight blush dusted Kyuubi's cheeks, though she quickly masked it with a shrug. Well, people aren't used to seeing a giant fox with nine tails, she replied with a playful pout. Naruto couldn't help but laugh. True. But don't you think that might be why they're scared? Kyuubi folded her arms, her expression turning contemplative. Maybe but that's their problem, not mine. I'm peaceful when left alone. You're the first person who hasn't been afraid of me, she admitted. Naruto scratched his cheek, a sheepish smile on his face. It might have something to do with you not showing up as a giant fox. QB nodded, seemingly amused. Both of them sat down to continue their conversation. So, what brings you here, Naruto-kun? QB asked, tilting her head curiously. Naruto grinned as he rubbed the back of his head. I wanted to talk to you, like Yugito chan and Bidu with their Baijuu. They told me it wasn't that hard, so I thought I'd give it a try. I was hoping we could be friends, or at least get along, he explained. QB raised an eyebrow. Friends? With the very source of your village's hatred? Naruto's smile faltered slightly but returned just as quickly. Without warning, he stepped forward and hugged her. QB stiffened, startled by the unexpected gesture. From the way you're acting now, I can't believe you hurt people on purpose, Naruto said sincerely. QB chuckled as he pulled away. You're quite bold, she remarked, standing with his help. But why don't you hate me? I expected anger, not kindness. I've made your life miserable, she said, her voice rising with emotion. Naruto's expression grew serious, his gaze dropping to the ground. For a moment, Kyuubi regretted her words, fearing she had overstepped. But when he looked back at her, his eyes burned with determination. I can't say for sure whether it's your fault or not, Kyuubi chan But I don't think you're evil. If you were, you wouldn't be so easy to talk to. I believe we can be friends, he said firmly, extending his hand toward her. QB hesitated but eventually reached out, shaking his hand. A small smile graced her lips, soft and genuine. Naruto's expression shifted into one of playful mischief. All right, QB Chan, let's talk terms of agreement, he said, his tone mock serious. QB blinked at his sudden shift but soon joined him in laughter. Outside the mindscape. Yugito and B watched Naruto intently, curiosity etched on their faces. Yugito glanced at B, her concern evident. Relax, Yugito. The kid's fine, B reassured her. Naruto's eyes opened suddenly, meeting the expectant gazes of his companions. 
With a sly grin, he leaned back and spoke. It went great. Kyuubi Chan is really nice, and cute, too. She's not at all the monster people make her out to be, he said confidently. Yukito and B exchanged skeptical glances. What kind of deal did you strike? Yukito asked cautiously. Naruto smiled. We agreed that I can currently access two tails of her chakra, as long as I gradually learn to control the rest. In return, she gets access to my senses, but only if I allow it. We'll also stay in telepathic contact to coordinate when needed, he explained. B nodded in approval, while Yugito sighed, drawing Naruto's attention. What's wrong, Yugito-chan? He asked. Yugito glanced at B, then back at Naruto, and shrugged. I'm jealous. Kyuubi sounds so reasonable. At least your Baiju doesn't have a colorful personality, she muttered. Naruto raised an eyebrow, while B stifled a laugh. That's harsh, kitten. I'm not that bad, Nibi chimed in her mind, causing Yugito to blush slightly. Yugito sat in thought, her brow furrowed in frustration. Why is Nibi always like this? She wondered. She's always so insistent. Ever since I met Naruto-kun, she's been relentlessly questioning why I don't consider him as a potential partner. How can she think like that? In her mind, Nibi chuckled. It's not my fault that Naruto-kun has that fire in his eyes. It's the kind of thing that would catch any woman's attention. Don't you dare finish that thought, Nibi. Yugito scolded mentally, her voice filled with irritation as Nibi laughed at her reaction. Maybe you should stop focusing on me and pay more attention to Naruto-kun and B, Nibi suggested. They've been giving you odd looks for a while now. Yugito snapped out of her connection with Nibi, noticing Naruto and B staring at her. She could tell they were both confused by her emotional reactions, which ranged from slight irritation to unexpected embarrassment. Blushing, she quickly tried to regain her composure. What are you two looking at? B, you should be training Naruto-kun, shouldn't you? Go ahead and do that, Yugito said hurriedly, before retreating to another room. Naruto and B exchanged glances before Naruto broke into a nervous laugh. B, unfazed, stood up with a grin. You're right, Lil Nine. No time to waste. Let's head outside so I can start your training, B said, handing Naruto a change of clothes. Naruto nodded eagerly, gathering his equipment and rushing to join him. With Yugito. Once in her room, Yugito closed the door behind her, desperately trying to calm the blush still on her face from the embarrassing scene. Meanwhile, Nibi's laughter echoed in her mind. Yugito sighed, thinking about how she had ended up with one of the most mischievous and teasing by Juu of them all. With B and Naruto. Out back, Naruto eagerly prepared for his first round of training. He placed his weapons in a pouch but left his swords behind for now, not yet ready to use them. B grinned at his new student. All right, Lil Nine. We're going to start with some endurance training. If you don't have the stamina, you won't get the control. Let's begin with push-ups, sit-ups, and laps around the house until I say stop, be instructed. Naruto gave a determined smile and immediately began. B gave him an encouraging nod before heading back inside the house. Inside, B sat down on the couch and began a conversation with his baiju. So, you think that kid has potential? The Hachibi asked. B smirked, leaning back comfortably. He's a good kid. He's got what it takes. I know he will go far. Plus, he's got the QB on his side. The Hachibi rumbled, a bit skeptical. She always had peculiar tastes when it came to men. She's not too different from Nibi. B began to rap, much to the Hachibi's displeasure. Hey, both QB and Nibi have an eye on Lil Nine. The kid's got something special, even if he doesn't realize it yet. B rapped energetically, making the Hachibi sweat drop at his antics. Remind me why we're partners again? I must have been out of my mind, the Hachibi grumbled. B dramatically fell back, clutching his chest. Oh, my heart. 
My partner is a cold-hearted octobull. He continued rapping as the hachibi pondered ways to shut him up without causing harm to himself. Later that day, Naruto, drenched in sweat and visibly exhausted, collapsed to the ground after a long session of stamina training. His arms and legs burned from the effort, but he felt accomplished. B emerged from the house, clapping his hands. Good job, Lil Nine. You've got some serious stamina there. I didn't think you'd last this long, be praised, his voice filled with admiration. Naruto sighed in relief, collapsing on the ground with a satisfied smile. B hoisted him onto his shoulder and carried him back into the house. Yugito, who had left her room, noticed Naruto's exhausted form resting on B's shoulder. She raised an eyebrow. That was some intense stamina training, she commented watching as B set Naruto down on the couch. B smiled, throwing his hands up. Do kids tough, Yugi-chan. I haven't seen this much energy in one person since you. He's going to be interesting. Yugito rolled her eyes at his usual antics, not understanding his fondness for rapping but refraining from commenting. Instead, she turned to look at Naruto, his sleeping face serene and peaceful. A small, Soft smile tugged at her lips, though she quickly hid it. B, noticing her expression, grinned knowingly. Wanna give him a kiss on the cheek, Yugi-chan? Yugito's face flushed a light shade of pink as she stammered in response, as shut it, B. I'm not like that. Flustered, she stormed off to the kitchen, leaving B chuckling behind her. Both he and Nibi found it rare and amusing to see Yugito so flustered and neither planned to let her live it down anytime soon. They had found a new source of entertainment in her reactions. Nighttime Naruto slowly opened his eyes, blinking against the dim light of the room. He realized he was lying on the couch in the living room, his body aching from the strain. Despite his efforts to sit up, the pain in his arms and legs made it nearly impossible to move. QB, sensing his struggle, decided to offer her usual commentary. You know the saying, Naruto-kun, no pain, no gain, QB remarked. Naruto chuckled softly, wincing as the laughter intensified the pain. He managed to respond with a playful remark. Whoever coined that phrase must have had a very unique perspective on life, Naruto said, grinning through the discomfort. QB stifled a laugh, her eyes gleaming as she considered his words. Though her role as his jailer wasn't one she enjoyed, she had to admit that his resilience often amused her. At that moment, Naruto turned his head and saw Yugito descending the stairs, her eyes bright as she noticed he was awake. Oh, Naruto-kun, you're up. She said warmly. I made dinner. Come, let's eat. The mention of food instantly distracted Naruto from his pain. In a flash, he dashed toward the kitchen, a blur of yellow light that startled Yugito. She turned her gaze toward the kitchen and smiled as she saw him eagerly waiting at the table. Yugito prepared a plate for him while Naruto, ever the gentleman, pulled out a chair for her. She accepted the gesture with a grateful smile and took a seat, while Naruto sat down across from her. After they said grace, they eagerly began their meal. Naruto took a bite, and his face lit up with delight. He looked at Yugito, who was watching him curiously. How is it? she asked, her tone both hopeful and teasing. It's amazing, Yugito-chan, Naruto responded with a satisfied nod. You're an excellent cook. I love it. Yugito chuckled, pleased by the compliment, and continued eating. After a few moments of quiet enjoyment, Naruto glanced around the room before turning back to her. Where is Bison? He asked, wondering about their mentor. Yugito swallowed her food before answering. He left a while ago. He said he'd come back tomorrow for more of your training. I'll be helping you tomorrow as well, so be prepared for a tougher session. Naruto groaned, clearly anticipating the challenge ahead, though he knew he had little choice in the matter. He also mentioned he'd bring you some new clothes tomorrow, Yugito continued. We didn't manage to get any for you today. Naruto nodded finishing his meal with a grateful smile. As they both finished, he turned to Yugito again. Where will I sleep, 
Yugito chan? Yugito smiled warmly, taking the last sip of her milk. She led him to a spare room down the hall. This is your room, Naruto kun, she said, opening the door. You can settle in and bring your things later? For now, get some rest, you'll need it for tomorrow. Naruto nodded in agreement, stepping into the room. As Yugito closed the door behind him, he called out, See you tomorrow, Yugito chan. She smiled and nodded, heading back downstairs. Naruto looked around the room, then began to undress, changing into the simple t shirt and boxers B had given him. He climbed into the bed, sinking into the softness of the blankets. Well, that was an interesting day, he murmured to himself, hearing Kyuubi's quiet voice inside his mind. I must say, it was a fortunate encounter. I had the chance to meet my captor, and he turned out to be a rather decent individual. I'm relieved I was able to strike a deal with him, Kyuubi remarked, to which Naruto nodded in agreement. I'm glad to hear that too, Kyuubi chan. Anyway, it's time for me to get some rest. We'll talk tomorrow. Good night, Naruto responded. Kyuubi nodded, then spoke one last time before severing the connection. Good night, Naruto kun. I look forward to our conversation tomorrow, or perhaps I'll visit your dreams with some interesting images, Kyuubi said, a playful smirk in her voice. Naruto's eyes widened in slight alarm. You wouldn't dare! Naruto exclaimed, to which Kyuubi scoffed. Try me! Naruto kun, she replied mischievously. Naruto groaned and quickly shut his eyes, turning off the lights as he prepared himself for what was sure to be a tiring morning. Meanwhile, in Konoha, the village continued to celebrate the departure of the so called Kyuubi brat, oblivious to the grave consequences of their actions. Sarutobi looked on, disheartened by the state of the village he had worked so hard to protect. As he busied himself with paperwork, a figure suddenly appeared in his office, disrupting his work. Sarutobi looked up to see a visibly distressed man standing before him. Sarutobi, what do you mean you've lost Naruto? The man demanded, his frustration palpable. Sarutobi lowered his gaze, feeling the weight of the situation. I'm sorry, Jiraiya, but we have no information about his whereabouts. I can only hope he hasn't been harmed. I'm at a loss for what to do, Sarutobi explained, his voice heavy with regret. Jiraiya slammed his fist against the wall in frustration, causing cracks to form as several hidden Anbu members flinched in fear. His anger was undeniable, and he turned to leave the room. Jiraiya, where are you going? Sarutobi asked, his concern evident. Jiraiya shot a look of disdain at his former sensei. I'm going to find my godson. I can't believe I let this happen. If I discover that any of the villagers were involved in harming him. Sarutobi, the entire village will regret it. I will not hesitate to make them pay, Jiraiya declared, his expression one of intense determination. Even Sarutobi could not help but feel a sense of dread at Jiraiya's words. With a deep sigh, Sarutobi sat back in his chair, watching as Jiraiya stormed out of the room. I'm sorry, Minato. Sarutobi murmured to himself, his voice full of remorse. I should have done more to protect your son. The villagers. They've truly betrayed him. Back in Kumo. Under the serene light of a full moon, Naruto lay peacefully in his new bed, unaware of the playful mischief Kyuubi had planted in his dreams. Though his body rested, his mind was far from peaceful. In his sleep, he muttered quietly, his face flush with embarrassment. I'm going to make you regret this, Kyuubi chan, he mumbled, causing Kyuubi to chuckle softly at his discomfort. She relished the fun she was having with her new partner and eagerly anticipated the days to come. To my dear YouTube family. That's all for now. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more content. Thank you and best regards. Anime Dreams